Hello guys, TavHD here and welcome back to another video. Now today I will be doing an unboxing and setup of the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. Now this is not my phone, I'm unboxing it on behalf of my mother. Of course I already have an S20 Plus and this will be a nice upgrade for her because she's currently got an S7. So let's get started. This is actually quite a nice box. It is textured, it's quite hard to show that on camera but it is on the side it says Galaxy S20 FE there's nothing really much on here to see it is a very plain box so I guess all we need to do is lift it up and straight away we are presented with the phone so I will use the pull tab which is very nice and just put the phone off to the side now it is worth mentioning that in the top of the box here is the information booklet and that sort of thing. It's quite hard to get it out, but there is. If you push on this, it opens that up and then you can pull almost like a pull tab. And in here we get our SIM ejection tool. And if we open it up, we do get some documents as well. But I will leave all that in there for now because I don't think we will be needing that. And now we can focus on what is left in the box. So if we lift up this white piece of paper here, we are greeted with our charging cable and our charging brick here as well. Now, because this is a budget phone from Samsung, it does not come with any headphones. They would have to be USB-C because this phone does not have a headphone jack, but they have not included headphones just to keep the price down. And to be honest, I'm not too bothered about that because headphones aren't usually something that I use with my phone. If I was to use them, I probably would not use the included ones anyway. So we have a fast charger here. This is not as fast as the one which, which comes with the higher end S20 series. I believe this is 15 watts and the higher end one is 25 watts I believe, if that's incorrect I'll put the correct one on the screen now. But it is nice that they do include a fast charger at all and I believe this is just as quick as the one which came with the S7 so that's not something to complain about. Here is the charging cable, this is USB A to C. The one for my phone which is the S20 Plus is C to C, so this charger still has an A port on it. This is probably just an older model that they are reusing again just to keep the price down. That's okay with me. This cable is white and is about a meter long. That's probably about as long as most people will need. So I've got no complaints there. Now I'll just move all this off to the side and we can take a look at the phone. For the purpose of this video, I will not be putting a SIM card in here. But if you are going to do that, it just goes in the top, if the camera will focus, it just goes in the top there, you use the ejection tool, of this pops out, and you can put your SIM card in. It's a nano SIM, and you can also put a micro SD card in there as well. And as I said, this is the white model, it's sort of pearlescent if the light shines on it. You can see that there is some pink and sort of bluey green in there as well. There we go, you can see that nicely there. This is a very nice colour. Now this back is plastic unlike glass on the higher end models. Again that's not something I'm too concerned about and it is matte finish as well if we peel the plastic off. There we go with the plastic off you can see now that that is matte but you can still get some nice reflections and of course here is the camera. We've got three cameras and the flash as well. I'm going to leave this sticker on for now because we will be putting a case on this. Now I will get the case now. Here it is, this isn't really my sort of style, but this isn't my phone. So there we go, and quite simply we can slip the phone into this. Well saying that, this case doesn't seem to go on very well because it is bent, so I think we will leave this off for this video, but I'll try and get that to fit later. But now we can turn the phone on and go through the setup process. There we go, Galaxy S20 FE secured by Knox and powered by Android. This is a full HD display, but looking at it, I can't see that it is a lower resolution than the one on my phone. Mine is a quad HD display, but this 
with general use doesn't seem to be any different. Of course, only time will tell. Here we go, time to set this thing up. Let's click onto next. Insert SIM card to access network. We don't need to do that for now. I will zoom in just a little bit so we can get a closer look. Yes, we are in the United Kingdom. Next, end user license agreement and all that. Let's just go on to next as well. Choose a Wi-Fi network. I will now sign into my Wi-Fi. There we go, the Wi-Fi is now connected so we can go on to next. Service provider setup, I have not put the SIM in, but let's just restart. There we go, it is now rebooting. Okay, so this is where we get the choice to copy apps and data. I'm not going to do that today, but it is quite clever how it does it. I've done it for a family member transferring data from an S8 to a Note 20 Ultra. Very easy process, but today we are not going to copy. Now, just a sec, checking info. There may be a software update that it might want to install, but I'm going to pass for now. So sign into Google account. I'm going to skip that for now because I don't have the details to log into that right now. Let's just accept all that because we don't really get a choice. Choose your search provider. I think we will go with Google. Got nothing against the other ones. I just think Google will be the best option. For now, because I don't have the person here who this phone belongs to, I'm just going to use a pin and use one which they will know. Okay, and now it is adding the finishing touches. This may take a few minutes. That's okay, I'm not in a rush so far. This has been a rather quick process. And now sign into your Samsung account. I think, yep, I'm also going to skip that for now because I don't have the details. But of course you can add yours in there if you have one. Now we can finish, just a sec, and there we go. We are now in on the home screen. It looks like it's already doing things there. Finish setting up. We're not going to do any of that for now, but the first thing I am going to do is turn on the 120 hertz refresh rate display. Now, of course, that will decrease battery life but I think it is definitely worth it. And maybe it's already enabled. That is looking rather smooth, but I am going to go into the settings and just see motion smoothness. It's already on 120. My S20 Plus came by default on 60. So I think that's pretty nice to see that by default they have put the higher refresh rate on. Dark mode is of course there if you want it and because this is an OLED display you do get the very black blacks. I think this user is going to want to keep it on light mode. Of course there's a lot of different things you can change in here but I think for now this is pretty much it. You can customise your home screen and do all that if you like. I will come back and finish this video once some of the customization has taken place and then I can conclude but I think for now this is it. Okay, so it's been a few days and everything is now set up just as the user wants it. As you can see, all of their apps are now on here. And I think that this is everything that they want done to it. They have not put their SIM card in yet. I think that may happen tonight, but that doesn't really need to be filmed. They are still using their Galaxy S7 probably for the last day today and then this will become their main phone hopefully for quite a few years and hopefully as long as the S7 was their main phone before that they had an S6 and now they've gone from an S7 to an S20 which is quite a long time to wait really considering most people upgrade after one or two years she had that for three and a bit so yeah not bad going hopefully this one will last just as long and I will probably do an update video in the future just saying whether everything is still going okay. I'll do one for my phone as well once I've had that a year. I'll probably do the same for this one as well. But I think that that is pretty much it. I don't think there is anything else that I really need to show. 
apart from it did do an update last night which was to improve the responsiveness of the touch screen as well as improve the camera performance. Can't say I've noticed any difference but I didn't think there was anything wrong with either of those things anyway. But I believe some people were facing problems with the touch screen but hopefully those have now been resolved. But I think that that is it. I managed to get the case to fit just fine in the end but I think that that is now everything so thank you for watching this video hopefully it was interesting and helpful in some way and i will see you in the next one goodbye